All right, so today I'm going to be showing you guys my crane. So Create 0.5 just came out and they added trains. So I thought to myself, hey, we're going to have trains that are hauling cargo. We're going to need a way to load and unload these. So I made this crane here. Uh, I made this scene where we have a ship. We have a little train, which by the way, this little train is not just, you know, I didn't get lazy. That's not why I made this. This is actually based on a historical train the Trevithick engine. So, I mean, this is what the old trains look like. So, that's why I made it this way. So, I'm just going to go ahead and show you guys this thing in action. So, right now I have my controller. So, we can move this down, we can move this up, and it's intelligent, so it'll stop. So, it only moves when you press the buttons. We can also move it oh, in different directions. Hold on. There we go. If you try to move it horizontally while you're moving the rope pulley up and down, it'll kind of lose its connection. So there we go. So I'm going to try and grab this crate right here, this pallet right there. So let's see. Let's see how this works. Let's get it a little bit closer. All right. Go this way. And I think we can just go down now. All right, so now we have the sticker. So we can press space to activate the sticker. And now we can bring this back up. Awesome, cool. So we can bring this into the train. that in and ah well you see it's not really lined up so I'm gonna have to actually move the crane so to move the crane I actually have to be in it so there's actually seven things that need to be controlled a controller only has six buttons so what I opted to do was to put most of the controls on the controller but the actual movement on the crane itself so we have this cab up here so we have a pretty nice view right this is a great view you can see the ship you can see the train now I need to move over, well, probably three spaces over to the left. So every time I hit this button, we're going to move over one square. We'll go see what that looks like. Perfect. Now I think we're aligned. Maybe here, we'll just try to lower it down a little bit. So I actually have this lector in here, so we can put the controller there. And we can stand up here, click the controller, so actually control it from the cab with an unobstructed view with the controller. So let's lower this rope. Perfect, we got it in there. So let's hit space to deconnect the sticker and raise the rope pulley. So we now, now we want to grab that vault over there. So I think from the looks of it, we need to move over quite a few more spaces again. do that by hitting this button. I did originally have levers here, but the problem was that they're kind of hard to control because once you're moving, it's hard to turn it off. So often I would just move completely to the other side. Are we, are we at the end now? Is that why some, oh yeah, we are at the end. Okay, cool. I think I'll be able to grab that vault. All right. Do it from up here this time. Good. All right, we got it. Sticker activated. Now let's move it back towards us. Into the train car. So now we've successfully transferred our cargo. Oh yeah, and I've used the new uh, glass pane, uh, the, yeah, the new glass trapdoors. Okay, so now we've got our crates in our train. So I've activated the sticker there. And I'll go ahead and activate the sticker here. 
that's necessary so that the cargo follows the train when it's in motion. So now if I go ahead and assemble the train, well, we can just drive off. And if I did that correctly, the cargo will follow us. So that's how you load cargo from a ship into a train using my crane. Okay, so I'll give you guys a bit of a tour of the crane now. So we've seen it in action. Let's look at how it works. So first of all, this thing, hey, wait, this is a, this is a train, right? This is, these are bogeys on rails. No, they're not. So this is just for aesthetics. So what I did was I started to build a train and destroy the station. And well, this is because often in docks you'll see cranes or on rails. So I thought this was a cool aesthetic. Really, this is a gantry contraption. So we've got the gantry system here, with the logic for uh, for the movement is down here, right? Because normally once you set something in motion, it just continues until you stop it. So what I did was for every press of the button, while well, you only move. For example, for the movement, every time you press, you move one space. You don't just continue forever. Uh, for the pulley, well, I made up and down, only active while you press it. Um, by default, how it wants to work is just always move. So I, um, I made some logic for that. So I've got these cool gears here. So I found the design for this gear on Reddit. I'll link the user name in the description. Um, really, this is just hiding a fan. Oh, so you see there's a bit of fan here. Um, so for aesthetics, I, I decided to put a steam engine here. So it kind of looks like the steam engine is powering the whole thing, right? But really, it's this fan, and which is powering this for, for looks. And it's, it looks like it, these two gears are interacting somehow. They kind of, well, they don't exactly line up, but they sometimes they do, I guess, because I moved it they kind of got desynchronized. But anyway, that's that part. As for the actual crane contraption, so of course I have a gantry shaft here and I have this rope pulley. So actually, I decided to put a chain, in case chain drives here, which I don't actually need. So I actually discovered while building this that I could actually power the rope pulley with the gantry system. So the gantry, see the gantry carriage has this shaft here. Well, the gantry shaft actually has two modes. So if I, let's say I get a lever and I place it next to the gantry shaft. I don't know if this is gonna work exactly, but probably if I put this here, you see the gantry shaft change color. This puts it in its second mode so that if I, if I activate it, it'll turn, but it won't actually move the gantry shaft. What this second mode is doing is turning that shaft right here. So I didn't know that that was possible, so that's why I built this chain, uh, um, this is a case chain drive here. So it kind of looks better in my opinion because it's more symmetrical, right? Because otherwise I'd have just the, the gantry. But I mean, I could have probably made it symmetrical without using the encased chain drive, but that's what I decided to do, and it works well. So I've got the uh, the controls, well not the controls, but the uh, yeah, the things that control the shafts here. So I've got uh, gear shifts and I've got clutches. So what we've got is this fan, which is powering through here, and I use some chain gear shifts for to increase the speed, because fans are slow. Not fans, windmills. Rest in peace, fans. Fans don't exist anymore. So I'm actually powering this gear right here, but it looks like this gear is actually powering that through there. So the shaft, once it goes through here, runs up to the top part with all the machinery. So there you have it. This is my crane. Um, as always, I'll have a schematic of the crane and the train together. I'll put that in the description. The ship doesn't work. This is one of my earlier builds, but it runs on a encased fan engine, and well, those don't work anymore, so rest in peace again, the encased fan engine. I will be updating my old builds so that they work. So this is my crane. 
So let me know if you have any questions. I'll be more than happy to answer them. So as always, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed my video.